What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Fantasy Flex Podcast. This is your NFC East edition. We'll also talk the impact of Baker Mayfield getting traded to the Panthers. I am your host, Chris Raybon, joined by my dude, one of the top fantasy rankers in the game, Sean Kerner. Sean, what's going on? What's up, man? How are you feeling today? I am hungover and I'm a <laughs> motherfucker. Wow. <laughs> really? Yeah, man, like five too many uh, oh, hot in here or whatever, old fashioned. That's... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is going to yeah. be a struggle, but we, we're going to get through this. We... Well, we're saving the best for last, right? The, the <laughs> NFC East. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got uh, – I'm excited to talk about the Eagles especially. I think they'll, they'll yeah. be interesting. But um, uh, we'll start with Baker Mayfield. But before we get into that, uh, every week we're doing a uh, lucky winner of a – free year of action pro uh if you leave a review on apple and this week's winner is i, I might be saying this i think it's money inc but i'll it's m-n-y-i-n-c uh so congratulations to you money inc or whatever however you saying it uh really appreciate the review uh hit up podcast at actionnetwork.com to claim your free year of action pro and for everyone listening, uh, if you want to be entered to win, just go leave us a five star and uh, we'll choose a winner from that for next week. And we'll keep doing that uh, throughout the season. So uh, stay tuned for that. But Sean, uh, what were your first thoughts on Baker finally uh, being traded? I mean, first of all, just like the compensation, that's kind of crazy. A fifth round pick that kind of shows you t- oh. like what's the value of, of of a kind of a mediocre quarterback, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, and I think he got kind of lucky. Um, I, I had him ranked around QB 31 because I think there was a chance that he was going to end up somewhere and be a backup um, and, you know, sort of have to prove himself <laughs> as a backup. But the, the fact that he goes to the Panthers means he's a heavy favorite to start week one. Um, I mean, it's not the best offense in the world, but he does have, you know, Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, uh, I guess Robbie Anderson. Um, but, you know, like I, I bumped him up to QB 27 because he's going to probably start 15 or more games this year if he stays healthy. Um, as far as everybody else, it really has a minimal impact for me. I didn't really update or upgrade anybody. Um, I'm really curious to see what happens with Robbie Anderson, who made it clear that he didn't want to play for Baker Mayfield. But uh, d- did you make any big moves in your projection because of this? Now I was already pretty high on DJ Moore. Um, yeah. So it was, it was kind of minimal too. I think, you know, you and I talked about yesterday um, with the part I can remember anyway, uh, that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it has more of an impact on the, the win total actually. Like, I think you said it added. Yeah. Win. Yeah. So that's about, good for the yeah, game script. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I boosted the Panthers um, power rating about a point and a half. Um, and over the course of the season, that's about, one full win so congratulations panthers uh you improved from a you know a 5 and 12 team to a you know a 6 and 11 team congratulations yeah it you know it's <laughs> it's, it's not much but it's it's better than sam darnold i think that's kind of the- and uh, yeah i think it's also safe to say uh matt coral might not start a game this year right <laughs> yeah it's looking like that now i mean you say baker mayfield is the heavy favorite i can't imagine you know you trade for him and like things would have to go really bad for him not to start every game, you know, barring injury. So, yeah, yeah, I think Coral now he's, I mean, maybe he's the backup. Maybe, you know, they do something with Darnold. I don't know yeah. exactly what the plan is, but um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I love, I still like Christian McCaffrey. I, I don't think you can really factor in his injuries any more than other running backs. Um, so, yeah. you know, like him, I think it helps him a little bit, you know, Baker Mayfield a little bit more, a little bit more accurate. Same thing for DJ Moore, but that's really it. It's going to be a pretty concentrated offense, at least with the, you know, the guys we care about. It's going to be McCaffrey. It's going to be more like if Robbie Anderson figures things out. I mean, that's great. But right now, I don't, I don't have him sniffing <laughs> relevance as of yet. So we'll, we'll kind of have to see how he, uh, how, how his camp is going. And I, I don't think he really didn't want to play for Mayfield as much as he just was kind of trying to stand up for his boy Sam Darnold. Um, True. So. We'll see how that goes, but he was so bad last year that you can't, you can't really draft <laughs> yeah. him right now anyway. Uh, all right, let's jump to the NFC East. Let's start with the Cowboys. Uh, 
they are the favorite to win the NFC East, though the Eagles are gaining ground on them. Uh, Dak Prescott is the QB seven in Fantasy Pros consensus ADP. Uh, how are you feeling about Dak this year? Um, I mean, what's not to like about Dak? This this will still be one of the top offenses in the league. Um, but, you know, Dak's losing Amari Cooper uh, this season. He might not have Michael Gallup for at least the first few games. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think we're ever going to see Dak's rushing upside that we saw before his 2020 um, season-ending injury. Uh, you know, last year his rushing stats, you know, fell off a cliff. He's not really running in for scores either. Um, so I think his upside's a little bit limited. They might be a more balanced offense this year. They have Zeke and Pollard, so they might lean on the run a little bit more. Um, so I don't really like him at QB seven just because, you know, you have Jalen Hurts and even Tom Brady right behind him. I think, you know, taking him at QB seven sounds about right, but it's it's just not a part of my draft strategy. There's just so many guys in that range that have top five upside that uh, I, I think considering, you know, Prescott's ceiling might be lower this year. I'm um, just not getting many shares of him at QB seven, but this obviously is an offense we want to invest in. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you heard the rumor and it's obviously a, a rumor for now, but I, I'm hearing that the Cowboys could actually be in the market for a, a veteran wide receiver, which could make things interesting, whether that's yeah. like, I, I'm hearing Julio Jones is a name. Uh, but if that, if they're in the market for a veteran, I think that would kind of maybe quell some of the concerns about missing Gallup for what looks like is going to be at least the start of the season, yeah. um, you know, recovering from that ACL. Uh, CD Lamb, wide receiver eight in ADP. Uh, what do you what do you think about CD this year? I mean, I love CD Lamb. Everything is setting up for just you know massive year three breakout. Um, he's clearly going to be Dak's number one target with Cooper gone. I don't care if Julio Jones comes on or not; like it won't matter. CD Lamb's uh, you know breakout is coming. Um, he only ran you know eighty three percent of routes run last year. We always you know get frustrated. Why is he not running over ninety percent of routes run? So he should be a full time player now finally uh but i mean that's pretty expensive like that's that's where he should be going is you know in the top eight so there isn't much value there but um i'm looking at you know the markets of him like maybe leading the league and receiving around like 20 to 1 like more unique ways to invest in him but uh you know i'm ranked as my wide receiver six uh yeah. so it, it's it, like the, the market's too smart now i feel like maybe a few years ago he'd be you know wide receiver 12 and i could uh you know tout him but the market's catching up, and uh, I think everybody knows it's going to be a massive year three coming for him. What do you have his uh, routes run per drop back at? Did you bump it up at all from last year? At oh, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I think, you know, over 90% um, a game. Right now I have about 93%. Uh, I have a 90 average. flat. So, yeah, we, flat I mean, we both have him wide receiver six, so that, that kind of shows you, um, you know, I, th I think he's going to have a great year. And right yeah. now, I mean, there's just not a lot of – if I have Gallup missing uh, – six games as of oh, now. Oh, wow. So you think he'll start the year off like on the PUP or IR? I think, I think it's a conservative projection is to kind of project it that way for now. Um, you know, obviously he could always miss games, you know, out on the other, like just in the season anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> if he comes back too soon, but yeah, right. conservative projection. So there's just not a, a ton of guys, I think to really steal targets. Like you said, Cooper's gone. So if they sign maybe a Julio, that would cut into it a little, but yeah, I think you got to draft a uh, CD land with confidence. Uh, this year in the top eight. All right. We got Gallup at wide receiver 48. That feels too high. Like I, yeah. I feel like it's just another example of drafters not properly discounting these potential injuries. And it's not like, we don't know exactly. So like, I'm not saying you, everyone has to project them to miss six games or start on the PUP, but wide receiver 48, when he's definitely going to miss some type of time, um, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just a tough, it's hard to get behind it and just not knowing exactly how he's going to recover. So, I, I mean, I'll, I'll pass at him unless we get an update that that's kind of is, is optimistic, but, uh, what are you thinking with, with Gallup at that spot? Yeah. I mean, he, he tore his ACL in January. So, I mean, he's going to be cutting it close. So mm -hmm. I think he is going, in, he, I agree that he's going way too high. Uh, but that is the range where you're not going to be, depending on what league you're in, you're not going to be starting him the first several games anyway. Um, and then once he does return, I mean, he's going to be, you know, a legit wide receiver three. He has wide receiver two upside, um, you know, once he's fully healthy. So, I mean, I'm okay with taking him in certain spots that late, especially if you're in a league that has an IR slot or something like that. But yeah, best ball, you know, you're sacrificing 
you know, three or four games potentially. And that range, there's a ton of guys in that range that we both like. And you yeah. always mention that, like, there's guys in that range that are probably going to play all 17 games that we like. So you might as well draft them. So I think it depends, like, on the, the type of league. But he could be sneaky if you can, like, survive, you know, the first handful of games without him. Yeah, I, I, you're always we, – we talk about this every year. I feel like you're always a little more <laughs> – like you like that strategy of kind of stashing guys. Like I, my, my thought process with that is just, it's like, I'm, I'm knocking down my upside because I, like you said, you could get 17 games of someone that could give you similar value to Gallup anyway, anyway, in that range. Like I know, I know you like Wizard. Um, there's Christian Kirk goes only a couple of spots yeah. ahead. Yep. Drake London is a, like, should be a, a number one wide receiver at least in, in terms of the target share um you know there's I mean and then there's a lot of the intriguing rookies like Olave and Wilson you could kind of take a, a shot on so it's it's just I, I just see better options because and maybe if he was like going to be a bona fide like wide receiver one right or, or two but like you said he could still be a wide receiver three um you know just you know just because he's he is coming back from a, a serious injury and it, like we saw what happened with Cam Akers right like I'm different injury but when, when guys come back, like the sooner he comes back, I feel like he's not going to be at 100% to where we can expect him to like pick back up right. at like that wide receiver two level. Yeah. And I mean, that, you made a good point about upside, like certainly in best ball, you know, you have more upside with the guy mm -hmm. playing, you know, all 17 games, but for season long head to head formats where, you know, you have playoffs. Um, like, I like the idea of, you know, boosting my upside for my playoff team. So that's why, you know, I kind of stash these guys that should be healthy towards the end of the season. Uh, but like I said, that specific situation. Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, he he's like a wide receiver three, so I get it. Maybe DeAndre Hopkins would be a better example. He, he's going a little bit too early, but when he does return, you know, he does have wide receiver one sort of upside. So it's, it's you know, it's a tough choice. But I just think in certain spots, I think Gallup will pay off eventually. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing with the games played. So if I bump him to 13, he's still my wide receiver 63. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, what do you have them for games played? Uh, right now I have it like 14 or something. But, yeah, I, I think we are going to see him miss, you know, at least a handful of games. So I'm probably too high. But I also like to look at, you know, um, you know, fantasy points per game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think that's that's important because, like I said, you're not going to be playing in the first couple weeks anyway. Like yeah. you shouldn't be drafting him to be your, your wide receiver three. So I think that. Um, when you look at overall points, it's maybe misleading with a player like him, but um, I, I try to have the, the games played a little bit higher so that it's he's where I would be drafting him. Yeah, if I bump him to 14, he's up to 52, so that's that's only four yeah. spots below. And I think, you know, if you're going to take him, I, I I would prefer wide receiver five. You know, he's going like right, right. at the end of wide receiver four. Is that, I think that wide receiver four spot is important now, um, these this day and age in a passing league, because a lot of times if you start three wide receivers – these like you're gonna need that wide receiver four in your flex like you'd ideally like to have a running back but you know running backs are being used less and less there's more committees there's always going to be injuries so that why i treat that wide receiver four like a starter which is which is why i'm hesitant to you know draft guys that are going to miss like a bunch of games right. whether it's gallup or hopkins or whoever that may be uh any thoughts on so you know we probably are going to see some missed games any thoughts mm -hmm. on tolbert james washington um potentially having some value because like you said at the top we do want to invest in this offense and Dak yeah. Prescott is gonna like if, if we know anything about Dak Prescott he's gonna get his yards like he's <laughs> we've seen it with Cedric Wilson I think Noah Brown had a game you know like we've seen he, he's gonna get his yards so I, I feel like right. there could be some value maybe early on in the year and maybe that's kind of I mean, you don't want to go too hard with like if you're already drafting Gallup, but like it's like handcuff him. But like, I, I'm, is there any value, do you think, with, with the rookie Tolbert or, or Washington? Yeah, absolutely. And we, we talked about this being like the camp battle we're going to be watching because this this could be, you know, the wide receiver two to begin the season in the mm -hmm. Cowboys offense. Um, I wouldn't write off James Washington quite yet. Um, he's a second round talent. Um, he's only 26 years old. He was, you know, he was blocked by the Steelers wide receiver depth chart I mean they're loaded there uh, and that could happen here but I mean he could be a sneaky you know deep threat in this offense but unfortunately they drafted Jalen Tolbert who's kind of similar so I think you know both of these guys we have to be monitoring closely um, in camp preseason because I think that you know one of these guys 
will probably hit. And they're going late enough where this is this is where you want to take some swings. Um, so Tolbert, you know, his ADP is in the wide receiver 80 range. I think you should absolutely target him in spots. And Washington's even cheaper um, in the wide receiver 95 range. So certainly, um, you know, in best ball, leagues like that, uh, I'm taking some swings on these guys. But right now it, it's, you know, it's too close to call which one, um, you know, will be, you know, playing the most. Uh, but they both have, um, you know, a pretty big ceiling. Yeah, I got my eyes on Tolbert. I think he's intriguing mm -hmm. as a guy, you know, because we kind of – Washington is a somewhat of a known quantity. And I, I think yeah. I think with Tolbert, it's like, you know, they drafted him in the third round. But unlike most third-round wide receivers, like he doesn't really have like, – James Washington, Of you know, it's not a hard guy to beat out. So Tolbert could be the starter – for the entire year, if if he can kind of get that job, which I, I would be a lot more intrigued than him. I'm mean, Washington. I think, um, I think he would be solid if he's in that role. But I, I mm -hmm. would always kind of be worried about him then losing it to Tolbert. Right. So I would prefer if Tolbert started off. So that's when that's when I would I would kind of recommend everybody monitor um, as as camp kind of picks up because he's you know he's his some of his college numbers like you know you look at like what percentage of offense of his team's offense he contributed to and he's like in the 90. 96 percentile and um his uh he had a 33 percent target share so uh, i like some of his his numbers in, in terms of what he what he did in college too That's yeah we, we 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 didn't mention it yet but um you know some routes are opening up because they also lost um cedric wilson so mm -hmm. yeah you know that was he was their number three receiver last year that, that would step up uh when gallup was out so the fact that he's gone definitely opens things up i think noah brown will probably be a nuisance <laughs> you know a lot Last year, he was commanding 25% routes run, even when everybody was healthy. So he might be a nuisance that would eat into these guys a little bit. But if either one of these guys is running over 80% routes run, you know, the first couple of weeks, like sign me up for that. Yeah. And, and like the reason why we're, we're spending time on this too, I should point out is that, you know, there's no Blake Jarwin this year. So this isn't like yeah. the, the depth chart behind Dalton Schultz is Sean McKeon, uh, Jake Ferguson, the rookie, Jeremy Sprinkle, Ian Bunting. Like this is not going to be <laughs> like a, a heavy personnel team. It, it doesn't look like, I know they, they got a couple of fullbacks, so maybe they'll, they'll do some of that, but you, we should see a good amount of four, four wide sets. In yeah. Dallas. Uh, speaking of four wide sets, do you think Pollard gets some slot action? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I would love to see that. That It looks like they're doing that. Um, yeah. And you know, they won't have Gallup early in the season. They lost Cooper. They even lost Cedric Wilson. So I would love to see them get creative uh, with Pollard. And Pollard is already the type of running back I love to target in that range. You know, guys like Kareem Hunt, A.J. Dillon, they're probably going to beat their ADP um, even if the starting running back is healthy all season long. But they all have top five, top ten upside, which Tony Pollard absolutely does. If Zeke were to ever miss time, I mean, you would rank him inside your top ten Absolutely, but would you, what, would he be like a top five back? I think he might be in my model. Uh, yeah, certain, Close. especially certain weeks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it it just it would depend on the week, obviously, and who's healthy and who's not. But yeah, he would be, you know, a a, a twenty touch guy on a team with a pretty good O line. Uh, obviously, good quarterback. You know, good offense. So, yeah, uh, like Pollard at, at RB yeah. thirty three and ADP have no have no issue with taking him there. Um, let's jump back to Dalton Schultz before we talk Zeke. Uh, Schultz is a tight end seven, which I guess kind of speaks to his emergence last year. Uh, but it kind of feels weird seeing Dalton Schultz up at tight end seven, uh, like, you know, in the preseason, I, I know we had him ranked there a bunch during the season, but, uh, right. uh, is, is he worth the oh, tight man. end seven spot or you staying away? Uh, well, you know, I loved it. Um, I want to say it was like may, um, he was going like tight end 10 or 11. That was fun getting him there. But now that he's up to seven. It's it's tough because, like you said, like the guys in that range, you know, Hawkinson, Goddard, um, even Ertz. I mean, those are very talented tight ends, not not to knock Schultz at all, but he kind of benefits from the system a bit. Uh, he benefited from, you know, scoring touchdowns last year. So if he has some touchdown regression, um, defenses start scheming to slow him down. I'm afraid he doesn't have the talent to really overcome that. Um, so right now he's my tight end seven. Um, and I'd be okay drafting him there. That's, that's where I have about four or five tight ends ranked exactly the same. Uh, but I, I like the upside you would get from like a Hawkinson or Goddard just based on their talent. Um, so it's it, Schultz is a tougher sell for me at tight end seven. Not, not going to lie. How, how about you? 
<laughs> he's tight in five in my model. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to fight you on that. No, I know, I know. Like, I'm not. There. I agree with everything. Like, it's like I, I agree with what you said. I'm, like the numbers, it's hard to. It's because you know, like I said, Dak's going to get his yards. He's going to get his touchdowns. Right. And then you know, obviously projecting top down. And Dalton Schultz ran around on 78 percent. Uh, of dropbacks per game last year and I which could even go up because you know once Jarwin was kind of you know in, in games without Jarwin it was even a little higher so I have him at 70 78 percent again same as last year and he's he's popping in the model so um I, you know it's not really <laughs> my my strategy to kind of right dabble in those mid-tier tight ends I really like the studs but I, if, if Dalton Schultz falls to me, uh, I, I have no problem taking him just because yeah. my, my numbers kind of back it up. And uh, it's all about routes with tight ends. I know he he obviously doesn't have the talent as like a, some of the other guys, but um, he has a more, more talent than I think anyone thought he did. That's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you already mentioned, but Blake Jarwin's gone. That's huge because yeah. uh, once Jarwin missed, I think it was the entire second half of the season, uh, we saw Schultz, his routes run, jump up to 85%. And he was the tight end four over that stretch. So, I mean, tight end five ranking that you have for him is perfectly reasonable. It's one of those things where if he finishes as a top three tight end, I would not be shocked at all. And if if he finishes outside of the top 10, I wouldn't be shocked either. Like he probably has the widest range of outcomes of any of the tight ends in this range. Um, so that's why, like I said, it was fun getting him at like tight end 10. Like, yeah. I think that's closer to his four, but man, you're really having to spend up now. Uh, I think the market, the market is very sharp right now by having him that high, but it's, it's just not as fun having to take him tight end seven now. Yeah. Sharp at tight end and, and, and just horrible at running at the, back. Right. And, and just these, in, and these injury discounts. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Just all those. But uh, speaking of injury, well, not even, I shouldn't say injury. It's more like injured ego, but Zeke, <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott, I mean, he just yeah. had, he just wasn't himself. Uh, I felt like last year, uh, you know, there were reports that he was playing with th- through some injuries, obviously. PCL, that, that's got to hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that obviously could contribute. So I guess, you know, RB18, I mean, we, there was most every, almost every other year of Zeke's career. I mean, you'd be salivating to get him yeah. at RB18. And now I feel like he's just not really being talked about. He's just kind of there. Like he's not really being yeah. talked about. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't mind him there actually. Like, I feel like, I feel like the injury contributed a lot. I feel like the O-line is still going to be good. The offense is going to be good. Pollard. Yes. He's going to get, you know, he's going to spell Zeke quite a bit, but Pollard could do other things. You know, he can play out of the slot. They, they sometimes use them at the same time. So I, I I like buying kind of buying the dip on Zeke. I mean, I think this is a much more reasonable price to do it than like, you know, Saquon last year where you were already paying like first round, almost first round prices for him. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I'm probably going to have a ton of Tony Pollard shares, so I wouldn't mind if Tony Pollard like leapfrogged and became <laughs> the starter, but I, I'm realistic. That's probably not going to happen. They're paying Zeke way too much money. So I agree, especially this range, like in years past, this is the frozen pond zone, you know, wasn't like Mike Davis and Miles Gaskin yeah. going in this range last year where it's like, a little long, but yeah, yeah, well, but yeah. it's like similar. And we have Zeke and James Conner going like, I love this range. Just the fact that we can get Zeke on the cheap um you know he played through that PCL injury last year so I, I'm willing to forgive him for that um the days of him being a top five option are probably over at this point but certainly like he's gonna outperform ADP if he just plays you know every game so uh I, I kind of like the idea of yeah getting Zeke as a low-end RB2 are you kidding me uh but like I said I'm gonna have so many shares of Tony Pollard uh, I wouldn't mind if Pollard eventually passes him up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it, it looked like it was kind of happening last yeah. year. But, you know, yeah. obviously, like I said, I think the injury had more to do with that. And he's right. like, they lo- like they love Zeke and Dallas. So it's like they're right. going to feed this man the rock if he's if he's good to go. So, um, yeah, I, I'm buying a dip on, on, on Zeke. Uh, let's uh, let's talk sleepers and busts for the Cowboys. We got. Oh, my sleeper's got to be Tony Pollard. Uh, his ADP is a joke because. Um, like I said, even if Zeke stays healthy all season long, I, I think he's going to easily beat this ADP. Um, and then he has top five upside if and when Zeke were to ever miss time. So Tony Pollard is absolutely my favorite sleeper on this team. Yeah, uh, I would. I'm going to go with uh, with Tolbert just because. I mean, yeah, I like Pollard nice. too, but I just feel like you know Tolbert's pretty much free um, in a lot of leagues, and he could end up being the number you know two or three wide receiver. 
uh, on this team for the duration of the season. So um, I, I think there's some value there. Uh, what about bust? <laughs> no one really. I mean, this is, this is like the perfect fantasy football offense. Um, maybe Dak, just because you can get Jalen Hurts or Tony uh, Tom Brady right behind him. Um, but, you know, like Dak's the reason why we want, want to invest in this team. Um, so I just think based on ADP, maybe Dak, just because of the opportunity cost. I'll go, I'll go Gallup just because I can't get mm. to that ADP unless I project them for, you know, close to 15, about 15 games, which yeah. I just, I don't think that's realistic. So, um, yeah, it's Gallup for me. Let's jump to the Eagles. This is a team I've been excited to talk about. I think it's, you know, they, they did a lot of good things last year, but it's still, but I guess the question now, and, you know, obviously had a good off season getting AJ Brown. So the question now is, you know, how much do they open this offense up? Do you think in year two, you know, year two of this regime now with a, another um, top tier receiver to, to go along with Devonte Smith? Yeah. Hopefully they open it up a lot. Um, but I, either way, Jalen hurts, uh, it would not surprise me if he's the QB one overall this year. I think uh, anyone not named Josh Allen, I think Jalen Hurts has the best odds to be the overall QB one. Um, just, you know, just looking at last year when he didn't have AJ Brown, um, he finishes a top 12 quarterback 73% of the time, which is the highest rate uh, at the position. So adding a guy like AJ Brown is just a massive boost to him when he was already really good in terms of fantasy, I should say. Uh, he has one of the best offensive lines. Uh, so, you know, the sky's the limit with Hurts. So that's why I was saying when I was talking about Dak, you know, when you're taking Dak, Jalen Hurts is still on the board. And that's that's an issue with me. I think where Hurts is going, uh, he also allows you to draft, you know, a couple running backs, wide receiver, maybe a tight end. He just allows you to really build around, you know, potentially the top quarterback in fans football. So uh, Jalen Hurts is part of my overall draft strategy this year for sure. Yeah, I love me some Jalen Hurts. And I like that call too, potential number one overall, because that's what you're kind of looking for. Like every year, so like a couple of these quarterbacks go off and then they they get taken in like the third, second, third, fourth <laughs> round. And then yeah. some other quarterbacks, you know, go off the next year, whether it's because of injury, just a, a bounce back, you know, emerging, whatever it might be. So I think Hurts is now like you, you don't want to, I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking Josh Allen, don't get me wrong, but what you're trying to do is find, you know, another guy that's going to kind of be able to give you that same production at a cheaper cost. Yep. And I think Hertz, like you said, is uh, is a prime candidate. So love it. Uh, I do think they'll, you know, they only threw the, like had a drop back on, I think it was like 55% uh, of their plays last year. So yeah, I do, I do think that's going to inch, you know, a little closer to 60 this year. So which, which, you know, would then. I mean, we also, we all, we don't mind him. Jalen Hurts, you know, design run plays which is part of those non dropbacks, you know, like either way Hertz is going to be, you know, the, the main cog in this offense, like he's with his arm and his legs. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, this has the potential of being sort of a 2019 Lamar Jackson. If, if they do unleash him in the passing game. Yeah. And he's got better receivers in 2019 yeah. Yeah. Lamar Jackson, uh, AJ Brown. He is going as the, Number 11 wide receiver. I actually have a wide receiver 12. I thought I was going to be a little lower on him, but he's still popping as, as, as my wide receiver 12. So I know you were kind of a little bit concerned just because of, you know, him, him and Devante and kind of canceling each other out a bit, but uh, where mm -hmm. are you in that? Yeah. I mean, obviously he's a top 10, maybe top five talent. Uh, and he's going from, you know, run heavy offense from the Titans to an even more run heavy offense. Uh, but like we said, maybe they open it up a bit. That That's where A.J. Brown would hit at ADP if, if they do throw a bit more. Uh, but he's probably just a bit too expensive um, at wide receiver 10, looks like his ADP is. Uh, so I think the best way to invest in him is through Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. Like by drafting Jalen Hurts, you're getting A.J. Brown as well and Devontae Smith and, you know, Dallas Goddard. So I just think that the way to invest in Brown is through Hurts. I think you're, you're spending up quite a bit to get Brown when it's a situation that's sort of unknown. Uh, but you know, he's one of those guys where not shock me if he finishes top five, but he's going to have to do it, um, on even fewer targets, I think this year. Yeah. I, I was like, when it first happened, I was a little bit lower, but after like, I'm looking at the numbers more and more, like one of the things, you know, I know we like to look at that's very predictive is targets per route run. Yeah. And AJ Brown was near the top of the league at 29%. And that's, I, I, I bumped it down to 25%, you know, obviously some regression and he's still 
my wide receiver 12. So, um, you know, he, I think he's going to be able to kind of, you know, that's just something you want to see. Like when, I, when he's on a field, he's getting the ball. He's, and so, uh, and they didn't, they didn't, you know, go out and get him for no reason. So <laughs> I, I think, I think yeah. he's a, he'll be fine. Like, I think even if he doesn't hit like, you know, wide receiver 10, I, I think his floor is still pretty high. Like, I don't think he's going to finish outside the top like 20 or something like that. Like, right, I think no he'll way. Be, I think he'll be in there one way or another. So I, I don't, I don't mind him. I have him again. I have him wide receiver 12. So if he's, if he's on the board when I'm picking, you know, what is it? Second round, third round. Um, I'm, I'm taking. Yeah. That. Yeah. Stack him with Hertz. And I, I think like earlier in the off season, like after the trade happened, he was somewhere like wide receiver six or seven. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's when I was kind of off him, but now that he's creeping towards wide receiver 12, I think that that is the range where I'm okay drafting him. Devontae Smith actually, that's like it's tough for me with him because he's the guy that I think gets knocked the at least in my model, he gets mm. knocked the most with this, you know, we talked about it with Tyreek Hill. When a when a when a receiver comes and is lands at the top of the totem pole in terms of like the targets per route, that's gonna hurt the guys under him. And and you know, Smith in year one was targeted on 19.5% of his route. So would you like that a little higher for a number one? Uh, receiver obviously he's a number two now so I, so I did bump him up you know that kind of year two leap um for to 21 percent but he's still he's still in that in the 40s for me at wide receiver and he's going as wide receiver 34 so I don't know where are you on on Devonta yeah I'm, I'm right in line with ADP and I think he, he's probably going to be uh, a little bit more inconsistent uh, like you said AJ Brown's going to eat into his target share considerably but you know, he has big play upside. It's, you know, he's going to be going up against number two corners now um, and defenses have to, you know, try to slow down AJ Brown. So he could get loose for some, you know, long touchdown. So I think Devonte Smith would probably be a guy in best ball. Uh, I would probably target. Um, like I said, like he might be a little bit more inconsistent, but he's going to have some spiked weeks. So I, I still like him. He's entering year two. You mentioned it. I think it was our last pod, how year two is mm -hmm. sort of the year we're seeing these talented wide receivers, breakout so i loved what i saw his rookie season so if he if he gets even better this season um again this is one of the reasons why i like jalen hurts <laughs> really because yeah. it doesn't matter if you take hurts like you know two of these guys can go off any given week it doesn't matter you're, you're gonna get all the production with hurts um but like i said i think Devonte smith is more of a best ball target for me what about Goddard? You know, we just talked about Don Schultz at tight end yeah. seven Goddard is the tight end eight so he's one spot lower uh, where are you on him? Oh, I love it. This is the first season uh, we're heading into where there's no Zach Ertz. Um, and we, we saw that uh, last year. He was uh, the tight end five from week seven on after Ertz uh, got traded to the Cardinals. So I, I've always considered him to be a top five, uh, you know, potential tight end without Zach Ertz there. However, I do think um, you, you mentioned, you know, Devontae Smith takes the biggest hit. I think Goddard definitely takes a hit. Um, in terms of, you know, target share. So he's down to tight end eight for me, which is in line with ADP. And when, when you're talking about like lower tight end one range, uh, you can live with some inconsistency. So I still love Goddard uh, tight end eight. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, he, it's interesting because he actually, on a per route basis, he was targeted more than Smith last year. He was 20.3% uh, to 19.5% for yeah. Smith. So yeah, that, I think that's why my model's a little lower on Smith compared to Goddard. But I have I have got it tight end eight too. Um, so and how many routes run do you? I mean, he has zero competition. The tight end depth chart is kind of a joke there now. I have him up to eighty four. He averaged seventy eight yeah. percent last year. So I, I bumped. I think I used the the uh, after Ertz left. I used that um, that for the sample size. So yeah, I have him. What about yeah. you? Oh, eighty five percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we're right in line. Uh, okay, let's talk. Miles Sanders, he he wants more opportunities. Squeaky wheel, RB twenty eight. I mean, is that that's kind of frozen pond esque? <laughs> uh, any any love for Sanders this year? Yeah, that that's a good thing with the running back position. We're we're you know the frozen pond tiers in the range where it's okay. They're not going to kill you um, if they bust. So I'm okay drafting him at uh, RB twenty eight. I, I just don't think he has as much upside as people think. They're, they're going to have a committee no matter what. You know, they're going to mix in Gainwell, um, even Boston Scott. Um, and then Jalen Hurts is hogging a ton of, uh, you know, carries as well. So 
Oh man. Yeah. Sanders, uh, love, love the talent, love the upside, but just the fact that, um, you, you can't bank on receiving usage and he had zero touchdowns last year. Obviously that's going to go up, but he's, you know, he's a five to six touchdown kind of guy. So, um, if, if you're taking some big swings at running back or something like that, I think Sanders offers a high floor, uh, but it, it's hard to, you know, get too excited uh, about him at RB 28. How about you? Yeah, I think it's, it's right in line. Um, yeah. it's not, not a guy I would prefer taking just because like you said, there, there, there's a lot of question marks um, with the touchdown scoring and, you know, will he get, he, he got 10 carries inside the 10. So I think he is due for some regression, yeah. but you know, the snap wise, he just wasn't really consistently getting a ton of snaps. He, he only topped 70% twice all year in snaps. So yeah. I, I, you know, if, Jordan Howard is not on the roster as of now. You know, maybe they bring him back. Maybe they bring somebody else. Right. But they might run less. Gainwell, I think, could take some passing down snaps. So it's not really a sexy pick. You're really going to be relying on Sanders to, you know, have some of his patented, you know, big, big runs and, and actually find the end zone. <laughs> if not, That's asking a lot. So, yeah. It's, it's, there's a lot of like, what ifs or like, you know, things that need to happen. But I mean, I, I do, like you said, Jalen Hurts, and this offense, I do want to invest in this offense. Mm-hmm. So I think best ball stacks is probably where I'll be attacking it. But I'm not feeling great about Sanders, especially if he has to be my RB2 in like a season long. Oh, yeah. Uh, that if would... he, and even if he, yeah. And if he's your flex, he's still going to probably not be quite consistent enough to feel even great about that. So uh, yeah, and he's, yeah, he's kind of a no man's land. Well, he's in the um, the range where I like to get one or all three of these guys, uh, you know, AJ Dillon, Kareem Hunt, Tony Pollard. He's going in that range where, Maybe week one, he's ranked higher than all mm-hmm. three of them, but he just doesn't carry, you know, top five, top 10 sort of upside. So that's why I like to have one of those guys or two of those guys um, to start filling up my bench or even like my RB3 flex. Yeah. What about uh, any any love for Gainwell? You're entering year two. You think he's at RB50, so he is being drafted um, by quite a few people uh, at the end of their bench. Uh, and you think he's going to, you know, get enough of a workload at any point to, to be relevant or just gonna um, kind of keep doing what he's doing? Uh, just keep doing what he's doing, which isn't too much. I mean, he's he's going to be their main pass catching back. But, you know, when you have a quarterback like Hertz that prefers to just, you know, pull it down and run, that that's not a really good role to have in this backfield. That's already pretty murky. Um, and, you know, it seemed like the coaching staff kind of soured on him last year. They didn't trust him to really handle uh, bigger workloads when, you know, Sanders or even Scott went down. They had him splitting – time with uh Jason Huntley uh that one week so uh I, I just he doesn't really possess the the upside I like in in backups in this range he might be uh you know a cheaper version of like a JD McKissick but I I just don't really see the the upside in him uh even even though he is pretty cheap at RB50 yeah it's weird I don't know why exactly they lost confidence in him because I'm looking he didn't he was solid in pass protection he didn't yeah, no, he's good. or anything yeah. so uh, yeah it was kind of odd we thought he might you know, be more involved as the season yeah. progresses, and it kind of it was just kind of hit or miss. Um, so maybe Boston Scott is actually, <laughs> yeah, know, the guy, the guy. Every year, every year we arrive on that. Maybe Boston Scott's the yeah, the the you know the best value of the three. All right, who you got for sleeper? Um, ooh, it's oh, it's got to be Jalen Hurts. Even though you know his ADP is sort of in line with me, that's sort of the quarterback position is uh, on point. I think in terms of ranking. But just where he goes in the draft and the upside he has, um, it's got to be Jalen Hurts. And, you know, I do love, you know, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. Uh, They're kind of tough sells at ADP. But like I said, you kind of get all three uh, when you draft Jalen Hurts. So Hurts is my sleeper for sure. Yeah, uh, same same here. (laughs) What about Bust? Um, Oh, man, maybe A.J. Brown just because. He's a little rich, but now that his ADP is dropping to the, you know, the wide receiver 10, 12 range, I do like him a bit more, but I love everybody in this offense, uh, I, I guess, uh, ADP. So the, the one that's, you know, probably the toughest sell for me is AJ Brown, even though, you know, I think he's a top five talent. Yeah, I'll go with, I'll actually go with Gainwell. I don't, I, I don't like this, <laughs> you know, this three, yeah. three-way committee. Um, where Gainwell might be the third and he's going RB 50, which is, you know, RB five is still, you're going to have to, you're probably gonna have to use your RB five at some point, just given the injuries and whatnot. So I I just like somebody with a little bit more upside, uh, in that range. So I, yeah, I don't think Gainwell hits that ADP. Yeah. That's a good call. I would agree with that. I mean, he's not going to kill you if you bust there, 
Uh, but you're, you're passing up on guys with more upside in that range for sure. All right, let's go to the Washington Commanders. Carson Wentz uh, is now the quarterback there. We got uh, Terry McLaurin just read up on the deal. I mean, nobody's really drafted Wentz. He's going as QB 25. Uh, but Terry McLaurin, wide receiver 17. Uh, I, I like me some Terry. I, I think he's a talented guy. I mean, we, you know, the, the only question is, do you think, you know, Washington did draft uh, Brian Robinson Jr.? Do you think they go like super run heavy with Wentz as the quarterback? I mean, it sounds crazy because they didn't have a quarterback before, but I feel like that that's kind of the offense. That's kind of what they did in Indianapolis last year to kind of hide him. Do you think they're going to have to do that here as well? Yeah, I I could see that for sure. And that that would make a ton of sense that they would target a a back like Robinson, the third round when they already have Antonio Gibson. So yeah, I think that they'll, they'll kind of learn from Indy last year and just kind of run it as much as possible because you don't want Wentz, um, you know, to, you know, have a horrendous turnover or something like that. But I think once, you know, he gets, he got shit on a little bit too much. He is certainly an upgrade from what Washington has had at quarterback the past several seasons. Um, so while I'm not targeting Wentz necessarily, I think he does help boost um, everyone in this offense just a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I don't trust it. I don't trust the guy. <laughs> I know. you I, hate I, Wentz, don't, I, don't, I just don't trust him, man. I mean, he <laughs> right. hasn't done anything to prove like even last year when he, he had like the fakest good, good looking statistical season ever. Like he didn't throw well, that many picks, but he threw him at the statistics. Don't lie, man. Yeah. I, but, I mean, no, but I mean, he, all his picks came up like the most inopportune right. times. Like right. they were like one handed passes to like the defensive lineman in his own end zone. And, and then all those good stats couldn't buy him a win to get into the playoffs against the worst team in the week. So it's like, I this dude, I just, I, I think things, and like Washington is not an easy place to play. So if right. things go bad no early, kidding. yeah, it's, 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 it's not going to be good for this man. Like I, I obviously wish him well, but he's got to show me something. So yeah, I'm, I'm down on him, which means I'm kind of down mm. on the offense. Um, I Even like Terry. Terry McLaurin. Not, yeah. I was going to ask, do you think he's like going to get a boost for once at all, just based on who he's had throwing to him? the past several you know his first few years in his career i don't really no um, I, I just don't think wentz is that much better than these taylor heineke's and alex smith's of the world like i just well he, i don't like i mean he, he's, he's a tiny bit better and maybe he thought i'll give him this he probably he'll probably throw a, a little bit more accurate of a deep ball but i mean yes. that wasn't exactly terry mccorn's problem to, you know like terry mccorn was already making crazy adjustment yeah catches, well, so <laughs> it might just make was... his life easier without necessarily <laughs> boosting his stats well, everything was Terry McLaurin's problem, but it wasn't his fault. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's what I meant. Last year, um, yeah, I agree. Carson Wentz is he's pretty accurate uh downfield uh, on uh pass attempts down, you know, 20 plus yard mm-hmm. downfield last year. He was third in QB rating and fourth in catchable uh targets at 76 percent. Um, and Terry McLaurin is a downfield threat. Uh only 14 of his 29 targets were catchable last year, 48 percent. So if he can come anywhere close to that 75% rate that, you know, Wentz had last year, that's going to be massive for McCorn's upside. So that we all know is there. Um, so I, I do think this is a slight boost to Terry McCorn. I'm not saying Carson Wentz is good, but he is an upgrade from, you know, who has been throwing the ball to McCorn. Uh, do you like the rookie John Dotson at all? He's going wide receiver 71. Yeah. Uh, he's got to be the cheapest of all the first round wide receivers. Right. Yep. Um, for good reason. I mean, they're, they're, it's going to be tough to project too many targets because Curtis Samuel is coming back. Uh, he commanded a pretty Who? high target. Curtis Samuel, ever heard of Who? him? Uh, no, who the hell is he? Saw it? 21.6% he... targets per route run right last year. I mean, he was barely playing. He, um, yeah, like, this guy, <laughs> Curtis Samuel doesn't exist at this point. Like, his, he's just he's just a figment of our imaginations. Right. Well, yeah, I agree. But that, that's why I do like Dotson, um, just because you can get him cheap. Uh and, you know, the commanders like him. They took him 16th overall, which I thought was a bit too high. He was certainly, you know, probably going to go at the end of the first round or early second. Um, I, I think he has like a Tyler Lockett kind of upside to him. So I like him. But this is where I would say it sucks having Carson Wentz as your quarterback. I, I don't think he, he can really support more than one or two fancy options a week. Um, so Dotson's upside is limited. But just where he's going at wide receiver 73, like I'm absolutely going to have some shares of him. Yeah, I like it. I like it there. I yeah. mean, listen, we say this every year. It's, you, there's certain rookies that you want to invest in, and it's usually first round and second round picks. And 
you know, obviously Dotson has probably the least ideal, you could say, landing spot of any of these first round picks. Yeah. But he like there's still numbers to back up, you know, first round wide receivers. Um, you're gonna get usually 50% of, of those are gonna hit and be fantasy starters. So, you know, there's only what five or six of them, and one of them, Dotson, is going wide receiver 71. So yeah, I'm like like just like you, I'll have I'll have plenty of shares of him. Samuel, I mean, he's one of these guys where I don't like to like change the games played projections for anyone, but I almost feel like oh, with him, you kind of have to. You at this did. Point. You did not. I, I didn't. I didn't How, touch you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I left him at sixteen, but I'm saying yeah. like I don't. I don't feel like he's gonna play sixteen games. <laughs> I might have to he, book that down. He entered the season hurt, right? I, I just think. Yep. I'm willing. I don't just... draft those guys. Right, exactly. That's <laughs> I think that's the point we try to make. We we don't try to predict injury, but if they're injured heading into the season, like you have to dock them for that. So uh like last season I, I kind of wrote him off before it even started. Uh, but he should be a hundred percent going in this season. So I think it's I think it's unfair, let's put it that way, uh, to really assume that he's injury prone at this point. He just had one season uh where he was, you know, severely injury prone. But you know, I, I have faith that he'll be able to play uh, over 15 games this year. Yeah, I mean, he's already missing practices, and I don't know. Oh, he is. Oh, yeah, I take it all back then. It's I, like <laughs> no, but it's like it's like it's like a yeah. it's like mysteriously because he they're uh, like oh we're being cautious with him. Yeah, managing like, his reps. Yeah, I it's it something just doesn't. I, I I don't think they they went they go that hard at Dotson if they have true like the least bit of confidence in in Curtis Samuel. I think they would love for him to be like their you know their, their number three receiver uh, right. i think i think dotson is gonna get on the field a lot um so yeah he, he's well, the guy i would target their depth chart got thinned out a little bit right they had um you know adam humphreys and deandre carter love deandre carter um they're both gone so they i mean they just want another slot guy and curtis samuel you can move around the formation i think yeah samuel and dotson's skills sort of overlap a bit mm -hmm. uh but it sounds like dotson will be the main slot guy and then samuel they'll just kind of move around i think um, so I think, you know, one of those guys every week will probably, you know, put up a decent score. I, I just don't know which one, uh, but just considering they're both going in the same spot, um, you would say like Dotson certainly has the highest ceiling, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm off. I, I mean, Sam is going six spots after Dotson. I just, I just don't see it for him. I, right. I don't think, I don't think they, I think we're at a point, like if we're already managing his reps in, in June and July, I just think we're at a point where they they feel like they have to play Samuel like on yeah. a snap count, like period. Like I, yeah. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but he also struggled at times, even you know, on the field. He's been an inconsistent pro. So I think this is just a great opportunity for Dotson to like establish himself as the number two yeah. option in this offense. You know, Logan Thomas coming off the injury, he's going at tight end 20. Um, you know, I'm I'm any you don't think he's gonna get back to like his pre-injury heights, right? I think they like the uh you know, some of the depth they got there with um, John Bates, with you, John Bates. I think yeah. he's going to factor in a little more than, than that year when Thomas was, what was it? 2020 when he was running a route on like 90%. Yeah, no, we, I mean, this offense sort of whoever's the starting tight end will run over 90% routes run. Right. We've figured that out by now. So um, yeah, I'm not in on Logan Thomas. We have to remember he was a late bloomer. So he's already 31. Mm -hmm. um, he's coming off of ACL, MCL and meniscus tears. So that's, yeah. That's brutal. He might not be ready for week one. I'm seeing, you know, he might begin the season on the IR. Mm -hmm. So I'm off him at, you know, tight end 20 when you have guys like Irv Smith, Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett, even Hayden Hurst uh, going in that range. Um, so yeah, John Bates would be interesting early in the season. I guess like the Scott Fishbowl where you draft like a dozen tight ends. Um, John Bates could be the starting tight end week one. And like I said, last year they had, you know, Ricky Seals Jones running a ton of routes, John Bates, whoever was starting. So I think that Bates early in the season could be like a low end tight end too. Yeah, definitely. And they, uh, they did, they did convert Antonio Gandy golden to a uh, oh, tight end. So now he's uh, maybe oh. he's in the mix. Yeah. He, all these big receivers. That's, that's the new thing. Devin Funches, <laughs> Nikhil Harry's next. Watch. Ortega Whiteside. Yeah. Ortega Whiteside. Oh, Nikhil Harry would be awesome. Yeah. I can see that. <laughs> um, let's talk about Antonio Gibson. Because I, I, this this Robinson Jr. draft pick 
combined with the fact that you already have a McKissick. So you're already kind of get there's going to be snaps allocated to McKissick just in the natural yeah. game plan. And then now you get this Robinson kid who they uh, was it was it a day two pick um, on him round three. Yeah. Yeah. Day two pick. Yep. And, uh, you know, running back 16 for Gibson, I, I think, I think there's a little bit of danger. He doesn't hit that. Cause I think they do want to manage his reps a little as he, if you look at the numbers as his workload w- went up, um, you know, the, the efficiency kind of went down last year and, and that you could see that in his yards per carry his yards after contact. Um, so, so I think, I think he actually is going to not see the same workload. I think they're going to yeah. kind of bring it down a, a little bit, but uh, what about you? What do you think? Oh yeah. I, I think the same thing. And it's frustrating because I love Gibson um, just having JD McKissick around is frustrating because Gibson uh, he was a former wide receiver, so he would obviously be a great pass catching back, but they kind of limit him there because of McKissick. And then drafting Brian Robinson, um, you know, he could be their goal line back. So we're talking about a guy that's now sandwiched between um, two valuable roles. So, you know, it, it's really hard to draft Gibson at RB15. I, I do think he has top 10 sort of upside, like he could handle it. And you mentioned last year when his workload went up, his efficiency went down, he was playing through some really nasty yeah, injuries. That is true. So he was, he proved that he could be a workhorse back because he was still running 20, 25 uh, times a game. And, you know, having once McKissick went down, he was on the field for passing downs. He was playing through injury. Um, so I think he can be a workhorse back, but just the, the sign is clear that they, they do want to limit his workload um by drafting a guy like brian robinson and i'm afraid that yeah he might sneak in a couple goal line touchdowns so uh you know gibson's sort of a frozen pond guy right in the uh rb15 range so i'm passing up on him especially when you have you know zeke and james connor going behind him where their, their roles are a little bit more defined uh gibson's a tough sell at adp yeah i don't know what what's up with the james connor adp like i i james connor is a top 10 running back and he's yeah, not like being drafted as such. So I don't like this is the second time you mentioned it. The first I was gonna let it go, but I'm like, nah, we got I gotta no, I like, gotta intervene real up. quick because yeah, yeah, I gotta man. Get pumped up on some James Connor. <laughs> like I just I just projections. don't get it. Yeah, there's like nobody behind him. Chase Evans is gone. It's like, yeah, we don't we Gibson, yeah. Get but back to Gibson. I, I totally <laughs> agree. He he does worry me. Um, you know, and you know, 206 touches as a rookie, 5.1 yards per touch, 300 touches in year two. And he d- goes down to 4.4 yards per touch. Like, I think, I think they looked at that and said, let's kind of split the difference, try to get yeah. him like 250 or so. I think that would be a little bit um, uh, kind of more in, in his wheelhouse. Uh, Robinson, I think, is an interesting um, kind of flyer, you know, like to take these rookie running backs, just see what happens. I think, you know, if, if Gibson does go down, I think he'd, you know, he'd be in that Gibson role and maybe even more. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you're never going to have that full full workload with McKissick there. But um, right. I, I've been drafting some Robinson, especially in best ball. Yeah, yeah. He's a pretty cheap um, handcuff. Uh, he's not going to be playing on receiving downs much at all uh, if Gibson were to go down. Mm-hmm. But like you said, they, they might be a run-heavy team to kind of limit Wentz anyway. So there, there might be enough there where if Gibson goes down, Robinson would be, you know, an RB3 flex. I don't think, you know, he can really get to RB2 range um, if he's not in on passing downs. Um, but certainly, you know, at RB 66, uh, he's pretty much free at that point. Um, so if, if you're drafting Gibson, maybe, you know, have Robinson there for insurance. All right. Who's, who's your sweeper on the commanders? Oh, uh, it's gotta be Dotson. I, I just think the fact that he's the cheapest of yep. the first round wide receivers, uh, and he's, I guess, one Curtis Samuel injury away, uh, from being a potential wide receiver three or four kind of guy um he's got to be the sleeper uh from this team yeah i mean i think i think from week one he could just win yeah. that like yeah, that job of being like <laughs> kind of the second most targeted so yeah right. I, I don't even think it matters sam i mean i think if healthy i think they'd like to have samuel starting alongside mclaren and dotson so dotson right. should be in there reg- like regardless unless they're going and like like you said thomas is going to be hurt to start yeah. the season so yeah. maybe we don't see a lot of two tight ends so yeah i uh, love dotson at, at that price um and Robinson as well, but I still, I would go Dotson over him in terms yeah. of just my favorite sleeper uh, bust. Uh, it's got to be uh, Antonio Gibson. Yep. Uh, just both players sort of cap his upside, uh, which is really frustrating because uh, we saw last year, Gibson was the RB 10. So he clearly has top 10 potential, 
but just heading into the season, like he's going to need one or both of these guys to go down to, to really hit. And he was actually the RB 18 in, in half TPR points per game last year. And that was with McKissick missing uh, like five games, right? Six that, games. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so six, yeah. it's, he's already, he's already kind of being drafted above where he was at last year. I know that, you know, it's other things are going to factor yeah. into that, but <laughs> it's just for kind of a point of reference. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, Gibson, not my. I love the guy, love the talent, right? But right, yeah. It was the, the time to draft him was was when we were talking about him when he was like battling Adrian Peterson and all those other guys oh. at his rookie year. Now it's like, all right, Darius uh, Geis, like, uh, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, Jesus, yeah, yeah I mean, wow. We've cut my. I remember saying that too. I was like, watch it be like Gibson and McKissick, and it, and it ended up yeah. being exa- it's the guys you never <laughs> expect. But uh, yeah, so that's why we're watching out for Robinson this year. Um, all right, let's finish up with the Giants. Should be pretty the quick. best for last, right? Yeah, or, favorite or team, <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, um, <laughs> Daniel Jones. I mean, it he's he's a QB 28. I think if he's starting, I'd probably have him ranked higher than that on a weekly basis. The just the question is, does he maintain the starting job, uh, all year long? Like, how many games are you projecting Jones? Are you projecting him for like the full 16? Oh, yeah, games? yeah, yeah, why wouldn't he? Um, I see, like, the, the ADP has to be a bug, right? How is he QB 28? Because I, I think that's what it is. I think people are factoring that he may lose the job. I mean, you know, new regime, obviously. Well, no ties yeah. to him. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's out of the question. I, I do like – I mean, I think I, I like the pieces around him more than I have in his other years. Well, I mean, the O-line should be better. He's going to so. lose the job to Tyrod Taylor. Doesn't Tyrod Taylor make every quarterback that plays with him uh, instant superstar? That is true. Oh my God. That would be <laughs> even Davis Mills last year, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah so yeah, I, I think, forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. So, no, sign me up for Daniel Jones at QB 28. I'm joking. Obviously, that's not uh, like say what you want about Daniel Jones. He's not a great quarterback, but he has, you know, massive rushing upside. Uh, and Brian Dable, uh, you know, like he can't, he can't take all the credit for Josh Allen, but it wasn't until he showed up in Allen's year two where he, he blew up. So, um, not that Josh Allen or not that Daniel Jones is anywhere near the talent of a Josh Allen, but I, I think that just a new scheme, a uh, new regime could help, you know, unlock Daniel Jones. I, I think he does have the upside and he's always, you know, his pass catchers are always missing time. I feel like he's never had all of his pass catchers healthy at any given time. Um, so I'm still, you know, buying in on Daniel Jones, especially at QB 28, uh, probably, you know, like a best ball format. Um, I think he certainly has, you know, high end QB two sort of upside. Yeah. He was a QB 18 in points per game last year. That was with the terrible O-line, wow. all the receivers missing time. Like, yeah, <laughs> I think he had weeks where Dante Pettis, like, uh, like one of the weeks he had Dante Pettis. Who else was there? CJ uh, board. Oh my God. Yeah. Like uh, John Ross. Oh yeah. See, like just if everybody can stay healthy for him, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I love, I love Jones at, at QB 28. I guess I'm, I'm trying to just figure out the ADP. I, it has to be that because people are, are factoring in, um, some, some, some games for Tyrod, but, uh, Kadarius Tony is 44 and ADP wide receiver, 44, Kenny Galladay's wide receiver, 57, Sterling Shepard coming off the Achilles is wide receiver 90 and the rookie second round pick Wandale Robinson is wide receiver 91. Uh, who's your favorite value out of those four? Who and, and I mean, in terms of value, um, God, it's tough to say. I think that you can make a case for all of them. I think where Kadarius Tony is going, um, I, I do like taking flyers on you know guys of massive upside, and we saw that from him last year uh, in weeks four and five. And then you know injuries being in and out of the lineup um, kind of derailed his rookie season, but I liked what I saw. So I think where he's going, Tony probably. Uh, offers the most upside but you know uh, a guy like if sterling shepherd is healthy week one i mean he's going to crush his adp at wide receiver 89 uh i think you like robinson so if he if if they end up trading away tony or something like that and robinson starts right away or something then i'd be interested but it's, it's hard to see how he plays uh with tony there so i think you know robinson at his adp could be appealing but i think he's gonna need an injury too to really to hit at that price yeah, I'm I'm paying close attention to like what's going on with Sterling Shepard because yeah, one of those two yeah. guys is going to be a value at wide receiver. What is the latest? So, Shepherd. um, it it doesn't it looks like he's on pace to 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 start the. Okay. I haven't I haven't seen anything that says he's going to miss time or at least nothing guaranteed. 
So it's just more of like, you know, obviously he's coming back. He took the pay cut. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know that he's going to miss games as of now. Um, at least that's not right. Like he's, that's not what I'm seeing. It's an Achilles tear though. So he probably won't return to pre Achilles levels, right? Like that, that's gotta be the most devastating injury to come back, especially the very next season. So when, when he does return, I think we're going to see a decline a bit um, in him. Right. Yeah. I mean, you would think the only, I mean, so the guy that kind of turned that on its head was Manny Sanders. I feel like. Right. Yeah. Was that, did he, was he, did he take an extra year to kind of get back to where no, he was? No, I think he, he, he uh, tore it up the year, like no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> he came back and he looked and he was in his thirties. Right. Yeah. Uh, we kind of wrote him off, but no, yeah, he definitely bucked that trend for sure. Yeah. So, cause Shepard is uh, Daniel Jones favorite target. Like Shepard, right. he's on the field starting. He's going to run a route like 90% of the time and catch like five <laughs> balls every game. So right. yeah, I'm watching him, but I do like Robinson again. I, I just like investing in these, you know, early round picks. Uh, Robinson has some juice and it was interesting to me that, you know, offensive minded new regime with Dable coming over from Buffalo mm -hmm. and one of the worst rosters in the league that they inherited, obviously, <laughs> you know, go out, get the, uh, get a, a edge rusher and a, and a, a, a tackle with your first two picks obviously needed that. Yeah. But I thought it was really interesting that in, in round two, where you're still taking players, you take in round two, you're expecting them to start that, that they went and attacked the wide receiver position. Um, so that kind of tells you that they might have some plans for Robinson. Now, is that just like a glorified Isaiah McKenzie role? Maybe, yeah. but which would not be good. Let's, let's no, be no. that would not be good. That would not be good. But like, there's, I just think there's there's some type of plan for him that maybe you know enough for me to take a couple of flyers on him in deeper leagues at wide receiver ninety one or or at bat, in some best ball because he does have some juice and he's a he's a big play guy and none of these other guys has stayed healthy so or, or proven that they can stay healthy whether right. it's Tony Galladay or Shepard so um, I wouldn't be surprised if Robinson runs into some value but Daniel Jones this is the time. I don't think you even need to draft Daniel Jones. Like I'm looking at the giant schedule. Here's where you want to play Daniel Jones. Week seven, Jacksonville, week eight, Seattle, week nine bye. but week 10, Houston, week 11, Detroit. He has wow. Jacksonville, Seattle, Houston, Detroit in a row. If, if, if the only thing screwing that up is a bye, cause that's, that's annoying. <laughs> cause you probably want to hold on to him and waste. You probably right. have to waste a roster spot, but uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the stretch you want Daniel Jones. Right. So, Stream him those weeks. Yes. At the very least. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm worried that Robinson might have like a Rondale Moore type of rookie season where when he is on the field, he's exciting and everything. But yeah, it's just hard to see him, you know, finding the playing time. But I do want to get your thoughts on Kenny Galladay, though. What what do you think? Because he was one of the biggest disappointments last season, right? Hands down. Oh. Um, so like the fact that you can get him wide receiver 55 right now are you like buying in on that or are you completely off him i have him wide receiver 50 so i like i'm not running out to draft him but i do right. have him a couple <laughs> spots higher than that i think listen like he's he was a late bloomer so what is he now he's he's like late 20s already i believe I would, he, if i had to guess 28 that. yeah he let's was see. a little bit of a late bloomer but he's, he's entering age 29 year 29 he'll turn 29 year. in like week 10 right yeah so that's um you know, so he kind of peaked at, at age 26 with the 11 touchdowns and, and 1,190 yards. And last two years, it just – because the, the thing about Galladay that worries me is it feels like he was injured last year, but he played 14 of 17 games. He just caught 37 it, balls in those 14 what, games. Like, what was injured, was it, like you said, was it his ego? <laughs> right, yeah. His quarterback, his ego, his coach, <laughs> his offensive coordinator. Um a lot of issues. I, I do think, I do think he'll, he'll probably beat this ADP of wide receiver 57. Right. I'll say that, but like, Oh God, is that so unsexy? It's just <laughs> we, like the, the issue with the giants last year that some people probably know if, you, if you're paying attention, but many people might not is when Jason Garrett was calling the plays, everything was isolation routes and, and receivers breaking back to the quarterback. Right. So I just think, you know, more being able, more, a more creative offense um, is going to, is going to benefit Galladay because, you know, he's he, he only going to do so much with Kenny Galladay running back to the ball <laughs> time after time. You got to just let this Wait. guy go deep sidelines. 
things like that. He would be the closest thing to a Stephon Diggs role, right? Yeah, I mean, he was supposed to be the number one receiver. That's what they got him for last year. Now, again, it's a new regime. And the, the, even with all of the circumstances, the decline in production is still alarming. Because, again, he did play 14 games. And right. he, he didn't – like, everyone else was hurt, too. So it was like he should have been dominating the, the, the target share. But he only got 76 yeah. targets. So I'm, I would say, cautiously optimistic that he can beat the wide receiver 57 ADP. But – yeah, he's just, you know, if he falls, I, I, I might take him. But, yeah, I'm not running out to draft Kenny Galladay. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, I only, it's only right we close it on uh, – because we don't have to talk about the tight ends. They have Bellinger. They the have the worst Jones. tight end group in the league, right? Yeah, we don't even know who's going to start. Like, they're saying the rookie Bellinger was actually right. <laughs> getting the first team reps and Seals Jones and, and Jordan Aikens were like yep. – Second we might see a lot of four wide sets. I mean, like There's the, the, o, the OG, yeah, like the OG Bills. Yeah, that's, right? that's like why, yeah, why that's even play a tight end. I I agree. There you go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's only right we close this uh, this pod by talking about Saquon. Saquon Barkley is going as the RB thirteen this year. Uh, he's not entering the year hurt, mm-hmm. so okay. that's good. Uh, but yep. What, what do you, uh, I guess, uh, you know, is that, where do you have Saquon? <laughs> well, I, I, like, I have him right in line with ADP. And last year we were correct in fading him. Uh, I don't think I had a single share of Saquon Barkley because he was dealing with that injury heading into the season and he was still being drafted like it wasn't an issue. Um, and then he did, he suffered that fluky ankle injury in week five. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't think we could fault him for that. Uh, but last year was kind of just a lost season for him. But for all we know, he's 100% healthy heading into the season. And I think he's one of those backs um, in this range where he still has top five upside. I, I still think he has that sort of potential, um, especially if this offense is way better um, under Dable. Like, I do like uh, targeting Barkley as a high-end RB2 this year. So um, I'm right in line with ADP, but there, there are some times where I sort of push the issue and try to get, uh, you know, some Barkley shares this year, as opposed to last year where I had like zero yeah, I, I think I think this is the year you, you can hop back on. I mean, I think the O line, yeah. <laughs> the O line being better, because that yep. was my other issue that I feel like was going under discussed, even with the injury situation. It was like people forgot that this dude was having games where he would run 13 times for four yards. Like, I think the O line is going to be good enough. I know there's still some questions. Like, yeah, maybe but there's a lot more depth. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the only returning starter um, is Andrew Thomas, so it might take a couple games for them to gel. Uh, but Brandon, like, you know, Mark Lewinsky, they, you know, mm-hmm. they use their first round pick on Evan Neal. Like this is an offensive line that's trending up and, you know, he's been playing behind garbage offensive line. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's a, you know, slightly positive thing for Barkley, but heading into the season, I'm way more bullish on him. Yeah. And I like, I do like, you know, the, you know, we got an offensive at modern day offensive head coach now, um, so I think, you know, we, we saw like when they wanted to feature Singletary in Buffalo last year, that, that, that worked yeah. out really well. What is he, the yeah. RB2, right? Over the last month or so. <laughs> yeah. So the only, the only running back that scored more points was Jonathan Taylor. There you go. So yeah, Saquon, we're back on him. Back Everyone on. was a year early. Yes. We told you not to do it. <laughs> you did it anyway. I hope you guys didn't, but somebody <laughs> did because he was short flying off the board last year. I remember in drafts, he was never, it was never at a point he never got low enough to a point where I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll take him. Like never, never. Got there was, there was, on. there was a week uh, where we targeted him in DFS. I think they were playing the Falcons, right? There was one week last year. We were all over him. Yeah. And there was another week when he balled out when I think no one was on because he was playing the Saints run defense. Oh <laughs> I yeah. Think he, I think he scored like the, was it that the, he scored like the game winning touchdown in that? Yeah. Week. Yeah. I think I had the under on his rushing yards too, or something like that. Yeah. But uh, he did have a hundred yard game in week, uh, week six. 17, 17. So that, that's good the new week 16 right yeah, yeah. Against, so yeah, the, 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 the fantasy uh i mean he, he didn't do anything else in that game <laughs> 21 for 102 no touchdowns no catches but promising sign um yeah. so yeah well, back on saquon and he has he has that snap upside like he actually played 84 86 89 percent uh of the snaps in weeks two through four last year so they actually probably used about too much too soon um <laughs> yeah. but he has that kind of upside to play like 80 90 percent uh of yeah. snaps if, they, if they so choose so. Absolutely. And speaking of Bill's running backs, um, <laughs> Rita is the clear handcuff, right? Yes, but I would 
um, go tread lightly because Ooh, what do you got? I have well, I have heard some rumors that they are that they they could be looking to bring in another veteran back. Uh, now, would he overtake Rita? Maybe, but like you know, it's 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 not like a lot. Like they could bring someone else in. So gotcha. Um, but if 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 we're in the preseason and it's you know we'll obviously know by then yeah. what's going on. But if he's if no one else is kind of in front of him by that point, yeah, I like Rita as a handcuff. But although he he, he he struggles to stay healthy too, but oh right, but I mean at RB eighty, yeah, um, he's definitely one of the cheaper like guaranteed handcuffs for now. But like you said, anything can change. They can bring in a bet, um, like a you know Frank Gore, Adrian Peterson, who knows? But yeah, for now, I think Rita is one of the you know cheapest handcuffs out there. Yeah, and it doesn't like right now. No one's really drafting unless you're playing best ball, where you don't you're not really handcuffing in best ball. At least I don't think it <laughs> right. should be. So, oh, well, you shouldn't be. Let me say that. I, I just not think you shouldn't be because right. you're you want to maximize the upside of every slot in your in your lineup. So you shouldn't be handcuffing in best. Yeah, ball. Let's all, get that straight. All joking aside, like I don't think Adrian Peterson or Frank were playing there. Are there any like free agent running backs out there? Because this is the time of year where I do like to kind of take a flyer. On uh, a couple of them, uh, we have the Scott Fishbowl coming up. I, I like to do that. Are there any free agent running backs out there that you think um, we should be targeting at all? Uh, I'm looking at the list right now, and oh, it's oh, it looks bad this year. Never mind. It, yeah, I'm, oh, oh my this goodness, is bad. David Johnson, Justin Jackson, Latavius Murray. Is that it? Yeah, Justin. Yikes. Yeah, Justin Jackson. I, I feel like is. I don't know what. Like I feel like he was actually good when he was on the field. It's just injuries with him. So. I mean, but it's like if he's not signed now, it's hard to inspire any confidence. And yeah. Murray is old. Who would you say, David Johnson? He's he's been watched. Yeah, like, oh, I guess the only, uh, Jordan Howard. If if he ends up back in Philly, he did look pretty good last year. So, yeah, but he'd it's be the only guy I would even consider. Even and even him, it's like yeah, he no. almost has to go to Philly. Like, what other team? Or what, maybe <laughs> right. what, Baltimore? Baltimore, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah um because yeah we're kind of off we're off jk dobbins that's our that's i guess that's our saquon this year right <laughs> yeah yeah i think he would be the, the saquon uh already you know iffy for week one yeah uh he's he's the the new saquon uh, and not and not in a good way um, Not in a good way yeah on that note uh sleeper before we get out of here sleeper gotta be, for the giants gotta be daniel jones at qb 28 yep love it uh gotta and be. a bust uh no one really because everyone's going late enough they won't ruin your team uh, even if they do bust. So um, if you're drafting any tight end from the Giants, there you go. That's your bust. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. All right. That's going to wrap it up for us here on the fantasy flex. Uh, if you want to find Sean on Twitter, you can do that at, at the underscore odds maker. You can find me at Chris Raybon. You can find us at those same handles in the free award-winning action network app. We'll be back next week until then let's get this money.